All right. All right, great. You've heard the happy news. You're excited. You're in the class. The only question you have is, now that you're in the class, what are you going to do? Well, this is what you're going to do on a daily basis. Every single day that there's class, and on a full semester, this class operates on a Tuesday, Thursday basis. If it's over the summer, it's a four-day-a-week four basis. So if it's over the regular semester, every Tuesday, Thursday, you're going to have an assignment. Those assignments generally consist of listening to a lecture, if you want to, reading the section corresponding to the lecture in your e-text, then doing the homework in Mastering Chemistry. Let's take those steps one at a time, and let's also take a look at how you know what you're going to do. First, if you look in Blackboard, every single day I will post an announcement. I haven't cleared away the announcements from the previous semester yet, but every single day I'll post, and then every single day the class meets, I'll post an announcement announcement that reminds you of what you're supposed to be doing that day. In addition, I have a roadmap here that helps you. Your schedule for success can be found two places in Blackboard. It can be found right here under the syllabus button, schedule for success, or it can also be found here in getting started. Matter of fact, I'm kind of hoping that you printed this out before you began listening to this welcome lecture. But your schedule for success, you'll notice, has, two, has three columns. It has an assignment, a date you should do the assignment, and the emergency due date. Let me start by talking about these two date columns. If you want to pass the class in an easy pace with low stress, you should do the assignment on the date in this column. In other words, on this day right here, you should be doing lecture three, and then you should be doing homework two and three in Mastering Chemistry on that day right there. However, I understand life happens, right? I've got kids. I understand they get sick. I understand that you've got all the time in the world to work on chemistry. You're driving home excited to work about work on it. You've got a flat tire on the Western Kentucky Parkway in the middle of a dead zone, and no one's going to come by to help you for hours, and you don't have cell phone service because there's a dead zone. I understand life happens, right? I understand that you're planning to work on chemistry tonight, and your boss calls you to do a double shift. Right? I understand those things happen. That's why we have the emergency due date. So you want to try to do an assignment on this date. However, you don't receive a point penalty. Remember, the syllabus says that you get lose 2.5% for every day the assignment's late. Those late penalties don't kick in until 11.59 p.m. on the emergency due date. In other words, this is the date you want to try to do an assignment on. However, the assignment is not considered late until the emergency due date. Notice how I call this the emergency due date, not just the due date. The reason for that is, is students who try to treat this as a due date and try to do the assignments on these dates instead of on these dates wind up failing the class or having a lot of trouble. Here's why. Sooner or later in this class, especially since it's an introductory class, you're going to run into something that you have an issue with. Great! You're supposed to, right? If you knew all the answers and everything came easily, easily you wouldn't need to take this course, right? You're taking this course to learn something that you didn't know previously. That means you're going to have to ask me a question at some point. If you run into a trouble working your homework on this date, you post your question, I answer it sometime the next day or sometimes that day, but let's say I answer it the next day, you then still have five days to go back to that homework and get it done. If you're working your homework on this date, however, and you run into a problem, I may not answer it until the next day, at which point you've already lost 2.5% of your points for the, for the assignment, right? 
Not only that, but it tends to be a snowball effect. You run into trouble on this one. You wait for an assignment, wait for a response. Then you have to finish this assignment, and therefore you're missing and late already for your next homework assignment. When you find yourself turning in assignments on these dates, on the emergency due date, you should treat like your chances of passing the class are in an emergency situation. You should only be turning assignments in on these dates because of an emergency, right? Life happened. That's why you had to turn in something here. If you find yourself turning in, an, for example, if you find yourself doing homework two and three on this date, you need to spend some time and get caught up so that you're back to working off of these dates. As in, if you're turning in an assignment on this date, it's time to <laughs> tell them we need the chemistry flu to work or to send the kids to grandma, right? You should treat like your chances of passing the course are in mortal jeopardy, pull an all-nighter, get caught up, spend some time over the weekend, get caught up, right? You want to be working off of these dates, not off of these dates. All right, so what are these assignments that we have to get done on these various dates? Let's take a look. Let's just choose this one right here because that's a good place to start. Lecture one. The first thing you're going to do is listen to the lectures listed here. Lecture one, listen to. Where do we find these lectures? This is your Blackboard course shell. The lectures are creatively stored under the heading, you guessed it, lectures. You haven't taken test one, so all your lectures will be under the lectures for test one to start off with. And you click the lecture button for test one. And then, ta-da, you see lecture one matter. Now, I like to use mixed media because I'm an artist, I guess. Um, your lectures come in one of three formats. YouTube video, live scribe video, or PowerPoint. Lecture one's a great example because it contains all three. Another thing I like to do is if my lectures aren't PowerPoint, I give you the PowerPoints to take notes on. For example, for lecture one, the first thing you see here is lecture one handout printable. If you click that button, oh, let's click it. Let's live wild. All right. We're living wild. We're downloading, 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 downloading. Ha-ha, we've downloaded. Um, you can see it pulls up the PowerPoints that I'm going to be gener that I'm going to be lecturing on. And you can print those PowerPoints off to take notes on. I strongly recommend you do that whenever that's an option. Um, one of the keys to succeeding in this class is to treat this class just like it's a face-to-face -face class. If you were listening to a lecture in a face-to-face -face class, or at least in my class, you'd have my PowerPoints in front of you, and you'd be taking notes on them. In other words, when you're listening to my lectures online, it should not be something done laying on your back in your bed with your iPad above your head, just sort of, uh, you know, zoning out like you would in the TV, watching TV. Instead, you want to be listening to those lectures, sitting at a table, with pencil, paper, calculator, and periodic table. Students who succeed in this course develop that habit. All my lectures contain self-check questions that I go over with you. To pass this course, it's a good idea to work those along with me. Take notes. Pretend this is a real class. Students who succeed tend to do that, and I've seen the students who succeed do that because they'll show up in my office or in lab with me with a binder with all their printouts, right, and the notes scribbled across them. So do that. It's one of the keys to success in this class. That and it, listening to the lectures like you were in a real class and asking questions, I think, are the two big keys to success in this class. Um, so there's a handout for you to take notes on. Then let's click part one of the lecture. Part one of this lecture is a YouTube video. 
I chose to post these videos on YouTube because if you have Apple devices, Chrome devices, um, PCs, uh, Linux, you should all be able to access YouTube. If you can't access YouTube on your computer, that one's on you. All right, so I have um, YouTube lectures. The other format that I have the lectures in, so it's lecture one, part one, is YouTube. Then lecture two, part two, is what's known as LiveScribe. And it's really important that you pay attention to what I'm about to do here. All right, you'll know that you have a LiveScribe lecture because you'll click it. And ta-da, you'll see this something like this in front of you where it'll say LiveScribe down here and you'll see a little www.pdf LiveScribe player there. In order to get this lecture to work, this lecture is a virtual chalkboard program. As in once you insert this lecture into its player, you'll see words appear and those words will be linked to audio. What I'm getting ready to do now is tell you how to get into the player. First and foremost, you have to save the LiveScribe to your desktop. How do you save the LiveScribe to your desktop? If you're in Chrome, which I'm in right now, you move your cursor down here and this little pop-up thing occurs where you can save the file. If you're in Foxfire, their little pop-up thing to save the file, I believe, occurs right here. If you're in Windows, A, I'm sorry. I mean, if you're in Internet Explorer, A, I'm sorry. But B, the pop-up bar that's over here in Chrome will be right here in Windows. Right, it's front and center in Windows. Regardless of where the pop-up bar is, you want to choose the option to save the file. So I'm going to click Save. It doesn't matter where you save it. I'm going to save it to my desktop just so that I can find it easily again. But a couple things you have to do. Don't change the save file as type. It's going to save as an Adobe document. Also, don't change the file name. For whatever reason, whenever you try to change the file name, it messes up the, the live scribe. I don't know why. That's just the way it is. So don't change the file name, but you can save it anywhere you want to. You can save it, and the college doesn't mind if you save to the desktop or you save to the My Files, right? You can save it anywhere you want to. Just don't change the save as type. Don't change the file type. All right. I click don't change the file name. Click save. All right. I've saved it to my desktop here. Now, if we look at the top of this LiveScribe PDF, notice where it says download this PDF to your computer. That's what we just did and go to www.livescribe.com backslash player. That's for people using a PC. If you're using an Apple device, are you listening people with Apples? A, I'm jealous of you because you have way more money than I do um, if you're using an Apple. But if you have an Apple device, instead of going to this web address, if you have an Apple device, go to the App Store and download the LiveScribe Plus app. If you have an Apple computer, go to the App Store and download the LiveScribe Plus app. I don't have access to an Apple device because I'm not that rich, um, and the college isn't either. So I can't show you how to do that. But you're going to use the LiveScribe Plus app, which is free, it's free, um, to open the PDF. Everybody else, all you PC users in the house say, hey, um, you're going to click livescribe.com backslash player. So click livescribe.com backslash player. And what it will do is it will open up a window that looks like this. Download your Livescribe PDF, then drop it here. Or choose your Livescribe PDF. Let me say right off the bat, this drag and drop thing doesn't work that well. It's very picky if you try the drag and drop. Worked that time. Uh, here, wait, no, let's see. come on. Um, the drag and drop function is a little picky. 
it'll mess up sometimes if you actually do try to do a drag and drop into this field here. Instead, I strongly recommend that you choose this blue button here, choose your LiveScribe PDF. So choose your LiveScribe PDF. And we're going to go to where we just were and open up that PDF suite we just saved there. Whoops, just a second. Choose your LiveScribe PDF. I opened the wrong PDF on desktop. Here it is, Classification Matter. Open the PDF. Wherever you save the file, choose the file. Make sure you choose, choose the right one. Click Open. And it'll take a second. It takes a second to load because you're actually loading something. And ta-da, now your screen will look like this. And you'll see an orange Play button down here. When you click Play, the green will disappear. And all of a sudden, you'll notice that the green begins to magically appear. And you'll hear sound. Um, for whatever reason, using this screen capture program I'm using to record my welcome lecture, it won't let you hear the audio, I don't think. Or at least I hope it doesn't, because when I'm talking over myself and it sounds like a mess. But what you can see is the, sa the handwriting will appear and audio will appear. It'll be just like watching a movie at home. You can flip pages. This is my favorite way to do lectures. So you'll be seeing a lot of them before the end of the semester um, because it is very much like sitting in class with me. I've got a virtual chalkboard. My handwriting's easier to read than it is when I use a tablet device. Um, so this is my favorite way to download the lecture. If you have the Apple device, you're going to have to use that app. If for some reason you're not getting the live scribes to work on your computer and you have a PC, it's due to one of two reasons. Either your Adobe Reader is, up, is out of date or your Adobe Flash is out of date. What I have done is if we go to the getting started section of your course shell, see the getting started section of this course shell here, scroll down to the bottom, and there's a link here for Adobe Reader and Flash. And the great thing about this is if you click it, um, that's not the link I was hoping was. This will let you download it, period but you want to make sure that you have the most up-to-date version for the Flash version here. Here we go, Flash. Do, 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 do. Flash is being grumpy today. He must have been fighting Captain Cold. Um, ah, see, it says your Google Brown Closer already includes Flash built in. It'll automatically update. So when you click that link, it should tell you if your Flash is up to date or not. Um, if not, Google is my Flash up to date or something like that. Um, but if you have any trouble with getting the, the um, live scribes to play for you, you either change the file name or your Adobe Reader or your Flash isn't up to date because those live scribes use Adobe Flash technology. And both your Adobe Reader and your Flash have to be up to date. I recommend using Chrome because if you have the Adobe Reader plugin and the, Adobe, and the Flash plugin for Chrome, they should update themselves automatically. All right, the third and final way my lectures are delivered is best illustrated in um, lecture two. I'm out of order here. Lecture two should be before lecture three. I'll fix that here in a second. Um, if you go to lecture two, though, downloading for us. How exciting. We're watching something download. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to watch some paint dry. All right. 
you downloaded this, and this time the lecture's in form of a PowerPoint. All my PowerPoint lectures have audio. All my PowerPoint lectures have audio. The audio will be playable on both a PC and Mac. If it's not, then I've changed it to a YouTube video, right? In this case, it's playable on a PC and Mac. So to get the audio to play, you have one of two options. You can double-click the trumpet. And when you double-click that trumpet, the, the audio will play. The other option is if you go down here, and you kick it into slideshow. See where it says slideshow right now? I won't kick it into slideshow right now because for whatever reason, going to slideshow destroys the recording system I'm using right now. But you can click it into slideshow and the audio should play automatically on most of my lectures. All right. So that's the... I don't care if the page is unresponsive. I'm, I've moved on with my life. Why can't you? Um, so those are the three types of lectures you're going to be seeing. You're going to be seeing YouTube, LiveScribe, and PowerPoint with audio. All right, so after you've listened for the lectures for the day, you're then go to, going to go to Mastering Chemistry, and you're going to go to Mastering Chemistry, clicking the Mastering Chemistry link. That'll bring you up to the course home where you'll see the assignments and you'll see the assignments plotted on the calendar. I would generally click view all assignments. It's really important that you realize, oh, they've expired me. Uh, I've always knew that I've gone bad, but at any rate, I expired, get it? Oh, come on. It's just being difficult because I'm in student mode. It won't let me do that here just a second. Give me a second here. Do 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 Ah, there we go. All right, we click Mastering Chemistry link, and now we're through to Nirvana. Um, shoot, or uh, where is it? Parabesh or whatever the the fictional DC land that's like in a mountain. Um, they used it in season three of Arrow. Um, but Neil Adams used to love to send um, Dead Man there all the time. Anyway, right. 1970s and early 80s comic books there for you. But your assignments, when you're in the calendar view, the dates they appear on the calendar are the emergency dates. You don't want to do your assignments based on the calendar, right? Because the calendar is the emergency dates. You don't want to work off the emergency dates. You want to work off these dates. The easiest way to do that is say, okay, I've told you to work two and three. Well, you can find them very easily if you go to a list view for your assignments and say, oh, there's homework one and there's homework two. Homework one and homework two, three, four, so forth and so on. Your tests are also in Mastering Chemistry and can be found there. Uh, that's really all I have to say about how you're going to be taking the, let me double check myself here because I've been having so much fun that I got distracted about what I was trying to do here. Uh, it, while I'm distracting myself, why don't you write down Bengals? Why don't you write down Bengals? I hope you wrote down Bengals. All right, after you've written down the word Bengals, let's go back to what you're doing on a daily basis. On a daily basis, you're going to be listening to those lectures I showed you. If you want, you're going to read the text over those sections. Then you're going to work the homework. When you work the homework, I have it set so that it'll show you hints if you need it. I have it set to let you try a homework a homework problem um, six times, I believe. I have it set so that you don't lose any points um, until the emergency due date in terms of turning it in. 
as you work through your homework, anytime you have an issue and you don't understand something, you're going to ask for help. Not only are you going to ask for help, but you're going to make a note of that problem so that the night before you take a test, you're going to go back and rework those problems. I have out, I have Mastering Chemistry set to allow you to rework things. I'm going to have, uh, you're going to go back and rework those things that you had issues with as you're, how you're going to study for the test. To study for the test, I'd rework any issue, problems I had issues with, and I'd go over my notes. Another thing I do to help myself study for the test is your assignments. In addition to having assignments that are over your daily lecture, you also have assignments that are end of chapter assignments. I'll, of, I'll often abbreviate them EOC. See, here's homework seven, end of chapter, um, homework 13, end of chapter. When you're doing that end of chapter homework, almost consider it a practice test, right? Use that end of chapter homework to gauge how ready you are to take the exam, right? It should really be highlighting what you know and what you don't because the end of the chapter homework should really be more of the same type of problems that you've done in these daily homeworks. So that's what you're going to be doing on a daily basis. That's really it in a nutshell. As long as I have you here, let's real quickly go through some course policies. Grading, grading is 90 to 100 with an A, 80 to 89 a B, et cetera, et cetera. This is a weighted class. You can't just look at your total number of points and, and figure out your grade. It's a weighted class. You do more homework than anything else, and therefore you'd have more points in, in homework than anything else. What I do is I reduce your homework to 20% of your final grade. Now, that's awesome because I've set it so that you get six tries at a homework problem. And you have me to ask questions, and you get hints on the homework. So I'm basically giving you 20% of your grade just for waking up and rolling out of bed in the morning. So I'm giving you 20% of your grade for doing that homework and trying on that homework. Your tests are worth 65% of your grade. Then your final exam is worth 15% of your grade. You're going to have five tests. They're given in Mastering Chemistry. You'll have a cumulative final exam, also given in Mastering Chemistry. Homework assignments are penalized 2.5% for every day they're late. You have six attempts to answer a homework problem before you lose points, except if the homework question is multiple choice. Um, when I say that things are penalized 2.5% a day late, I mean 2.5% a day after the emergency due date, right? You only lose points after that emergency due date. As I said, I'm giving you a week in which life happens, right? Because I'm giving you a week for life to happen, I don't give extensions, right? No extensions. Because I've already given you, in my mind, a week extension, right? I've given you a week from the time you should do an assignment to the emergency due date. So saying, yeah, Lee, um, I got, I'm too tired. I was too tired to do my homework because I worked three 12-hour shifts in a row. Well, what about the other four days, right? You see what I'm saying? As long as you're working off that to-due date as opposed to the emergency due date, then you shouldn't be turning in week late, stuff late. Withdrawal policy, I'm happy to let people withdraw as long as you email me before 10 a.m. Let me warn you, I don't set this date as some sort of random weirdness on my part. I set this because administration has made withdrawal so complicated. Um, every college in the system has their own date and their own policy for how you withdraw and by when you have to. So what I did is I set a date that gives us five days to do paperwork um, needed to get you out of the class. 
Um, for example, my college, Elizabethtown, has now gone to a process where you to withdraw from a class, you go online, you fill out a form, and then it's no longer just asking my permission. You have to go to like two or three other places and check boxes. It's really a bizarre, hideous process they've created for you. Um, I know Bluegrass, I, it's either Bluegrass or Jefferson, one of the two requires like a four or five um, step process as well. Because of this process, let me stress, I do not personally have the power to withdraw you. So emailing me and saying I want out of the class does not get you withdrawn. When you email me and ask to withdraw from the class, what I do is I email you back saying you have my permission to withdraw with the grade of W. You then have to complete the rest of the um, scavenger hunt, so to speak, to get yourself withdrawn. And the reason you need to email me at all is you need to have that email documenting you have my permission to show to somebody at some point along the cycle. Usually, up until Elizabethtown was this way up until recently, most of the time you'll simply forward my email to your local records office and that will get you withdrawn. Unfortunately, it's something that all 16 of us colleges have a different policy on and therefore it's become a little bit cumbersome. I'm not thinking of the students. Uh, but at any rate, all right, <clears throat> that clumping sound was me stepping off my soapbox. Course extensions, I don't give course extensions. I do not give eyes. The reason being is um, for the first five or six years I was teaching, I would give tons of eyes. Out of over 200 eyes forms I filled out, I had one person finish their work and change their grade. Therefore, I do not give eyes. I give you an E. If you ask for a course extension and I give you one, I give you a grade of E. That grade of E stays on your transcript until you complete the coursework, at which point I will then file a change of grade for it, form for you. But I will only even take that step if you meet one of the conditions outlined here. So I do not give course extensions. Also, let me be very clear with you about this policy. No assignments will be accepted after the date shown here. Again, this isn't some um, bizarre power trip by me, right? Just like you have deadlines and things you have to get done in this course, I've got my own deadlines to meet. I have to turn in grades. The computer program that I turn in grades on will not let me assign grades for just individuals. It forces me to assign grades to the entire class. Therefore, if I'm to get grades turned in, I have to close down the computer. At the, I have to close the class and end the class at the time shown here. I'm sorry. Whatever the excuse you may give me, I can't budge off that date. My hands are really tied on this one. It's not a matter of me trying to be mean or punitive or anything like that. I have to have the class and the grades close. I have to have the class class closed at that point so I can turn in grades. Um, but you'll notice that that is at least 24 hours after the date you're supposed to turn in the final. So if you're meeting the emergency due dates for items there's still a 24-hour difference between that emergency due date and the time I make the class disappear. But I have to be strict on that. That one's one of those things that's out of my hands. Out of my hands. Um, out of your hands, just like the Steelers' corners. Why don't you write down Steelers? Apparently, I'm doing an AFC North uh, montage here in this lecture. AFC, so um, write down Steelers. Did you write down Steelers? I hope you wrote down Steelers. All right. Trying to think of anything else that I need to point out to you. I think that just about covers it. So I look forward to working with everybody during the course of the semester. And I let me reiterate, I'm here to help you. I want to help you. I'm looking forward to helping you.
and this is going to be a fun semester for us both, and off to the races. The